Hi there, I'm Hannah Brown, Head of Content at eResidency, and welcome to my little video passion project. If you're enjoying these conversations with eResidents, please like, subscribe, and comment below. In today's video, I spoke with Crystal Abiasi, an entrepreneur based between Tallinn and Dubai. She has a background in sales and marketing and nutrition, and she comes from a long line of entrepreneurs in her family. Crystal became an e-resident in 2020 to access much needed business banking and payment gateway solutions for her business. Her business is called Amazon Seller Society and provides services, uh, support services, product hunting services, account management and more for small businesses selling products on Amazon. Her main client focus is in the Middle East. Um, and so I hope that you get a lot out of this video uh, if you're looking to sell products on Amazon. In the interview, we covered Christelle's entrepreneurial journey, her e-residency story, and also her passion for Estonia, Tallinn, and business, of course. So please watch and enjoy this fifth video in our series, Conversations with e-residents. Hi, Crystal. Thank you so much for joining us on Conversations with e-residents. So let's get straight into it. And um, I'd love to hear from you, first of all, about your entrepreneurial background. Um, what has led you to become the founder and entrepreneur you are today? Hi, Hannah. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be uh, talking to you in this formal setting. Uh, and I'm really, really honored to be uh, in this conversation with you and to talk about my favorite subjects, which is e-residency of, of like, I have a lot of subjects, but this is, this is one of my favorite me too, subjects. Me too. <laughs> yeah, so um, um, I honestly uh, come from a long line of entrepreneurs. So growing up, my parents were both entrepreneurs and it was um, a very common thing for, for us, for me growing up and seeing them create their own business and, and doing all of that. So it was naturally um, a, a style of business that I wanted to get into. I wanted to own my own business and my own companies. And straight away, that's what I ended up doing. I had a few service-based companies. Um, my background is nothing related to what I'm doing now. <laughs> right now, uh, you know, which I will obviously explain to you what I currently do. But uh, I come from a you know business background as well as a nutrition background. I'm trained to be a nutritionist, and mm -hmm. I've always operated my own businesses and companies, more focused on providing services and very, very much focused on sales and marketing, which is a very big passion of mine. And then in 2015, um, I met uh, somebody who became my business partner. And together we decided to, we saw a gap in the market and we decided to actually go into the physical product business. We developed a, a, a range of supplements. And that was really my first experience of understanding how Amazon works, because back then I didn't really know what private label basically means, which is an integral part of, you know, being an Amazon seller. So I learned what, uh, what, uh, uh, private label, we found a great manufacturer that just basically created our own product, but they had the manufacturing facility, which was absolutely mind blowing. If you think about it, how easy it is to get started. But we didn't set out to become Amazon sellers. We actually were naive enough to think, yeah, we, we'll just go and sell this product in pharmacies and health food shops, and they'll just invite us with arms wide open. And when we actually got to that point, we discovered that it was very, very hard to get into physical stores. Most of these stores had a long relationship with large brands and they would either take our products on consignment, which for a small business just doesn't, just doesn't, doesn't work, or they would just need us to pay something upfront so that they would promote our products. So naturally we thought, let's go online. We started selling our products online. We developed our own web store, but um, we had a lot of problems there, which ended up, you know, problems at that point are things that, you know, you feel like it's the end of the world for you as a business owner. But you later on, when you look back, you see how all the dots connect. And that's the reason that pushed me into figuring out this whole Amazon thing, because I thought I needed to figure out somewhere where I could sell these products, where I could have somebody take care of the logistics, somebody take care of the traffic. I just needed to focus on what I love, which is sales and marketing. And that's what that's what led us to, to, to become Amazon sellers. And 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 um, that's how I developed my skills, because I had to I had to learn how to sell on Amazon. 
And the cool thing is after a couple of years, we were able to, you know, we were, we were, we sold out. So we sold, not sold out. We, we sold the business to our competitors. So I exited the business, but I was left with incredible passion for Amazon e-commerce. And I thought the best thing for me moving forward is to support other small businesses and help them expand. And that's when I set up my company, which has evolved now, but when I set it up, the whole idea was, I just want to consult, just want to give some support, just want to help, just want to train, educate, and provide, you know, information because I I found so much success and I thought, you know, other people can find success as well. And that's, I created something called Amazon Sellers Society, which is my company to this day, but it was registered in the UK and I wanted to find uh customers and 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 small businesses where i could really provide support and you know i am a business i come from a business background i also wanted to find a market where i would be in a blue ocean where i would really be you know able to operate without a lot of competitors and that's and me being from the middle east i knew that would be the market for it so I looked at the Middle East. There was no Amazon operating in the Middle East. And that's what we started to do. We started supporting small businesses who manufacture really cool products and helping them expand really globally by just becoming Amazon sellers on Amazon.com as well as Amazon UK. And then fast forward to today, we moved our offices to Dubai. And we started focusing more on the actual market in the Middle East because Amazon um, you, uh, op started operating in the Middle East in 2019, just after we, we moved our head office and um, we expanded. And currently we, you know, we're very proud to say that we are, you know, the leading uh, Amazon service provider. We're certified by Amazon. We're partnered by Amazon and we offer not, no longer do we just offer consultation. We actually offer operational services for anyone that wants to sell on Amazon. And we're focused on the Middle East market. Wow, that's really exciting. Um, and somewhere in that mix, e-residency came along and um, and you started uh, operations in the EU as well in Estonia. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that um, and how that happened. Um, that was like an integral stepping stone for the whole story, because mm -hmm. I think if I hadn't found e-residency and I hadn't shifted my business um, to an Estonian company, I think I wouldn't I wouldn't have survived the years that a lot of businesses had to, to, to shut down, which was like the, during the pandemic and definitely okay. 2020, 2021. That was an integral part. However, my story started before the pandemic. So mm -hmm. I thought about, you know, I, I was looking for a solution because we were getting a lot of uh, international global entrepreneurs that were looking for uh, courses. They were just simply looking for courses to learn online, to learn exactly how to sell on Amazon in the Middle East. I had that knowledge. I was able to create a course, but I wasn't able to sell the course because I was operating as a UAE-based company. And back then, I wasn't able to get something as simple as uh, a payment gateway for my for my business. Like, how are people going to pay me for the course if I can't send them like a payment gateway for them to pay? which led me into looking at uh, solutions. I didn't want to go back to a UK-based business. And I found the e-residency program through my own research mm -hmm. and through the amazing e-residency community because I learned more about it through YouTube. I just found these really incredible YouTube videos from people who had become e-residents and then talking about their experience and picking up the e-residency card, which made me even more excited. So I just, you know, thought I, I did a little bit of research and I found, you know, that's that's exactly what I what I need. And um, I applied, but I actually applied before the pandemic and then the pandemic happened. So I had to wait almost six months in order to be able to travel because back then there wasn't you couldn't pick up your e-residency card from uh, the UAE because there wasn't that option. After I went to Turkey after a few months, then, you know, it was like, now you can go pick it up from Abu Dhabi, which is like a two hour drive, but I had to travel. So that's when, fine. So, when, you, when, you, uh, when you renew, you can go to Abu Dhabi. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Now you can go to Abu Dhabi. So that's fine. <laughs> um, so I had to, I had to travel. So I had to wait for a very long time. 
-hmm. And as soon as I got uh, the e-residency card, I, you know, it was, it was just seamless. I registered my business and like, like it was supposed to be 24 hours, but it happened in like one hour. I opened a bank account. I opened a payment gateway and I just plugged them into the system that we had developed. And we started, we started operating these courses. And the reason why I say it was such an integral part, yeah, of course, the courses were a valuable uh, thing for our business, of course, from a business perspective, but it was also valuable to support sellers. Because at that point, Hannah, a lot of people were either losing their job or, you know, um, looking for secondary income. So we were able to provide them the skills that they need to learn in order to do that. But also for us, we were getting a lot of people interested to, to, to take our services. However, again, if they were not based in the UAE, it was really hard to just like give them, send them a, a bank account so that they can transfer the funds versus sending them a link where they just pay with their debit card or their credit card. So uh, being uh, able to have all of those uh, means of getting people's funds or, or like uh, opening different bank accounts and different currencies and all of that was also very integ integral for the growth of our company. So that's why I say I'm sure, I'm almost sure that, you know, the e-residency program played a vital role because it gave me all of those tools to be able to run the business as effectively as I want. Very cool. Um, so my next question was going to be about your business, but we've, we, you've sort of already touched on it, but maybe you can go into a little bit more detail about what, um, how you can, how you help your clients and the types of clients you have. Um, you, you mentioned that you, you're focusing on the Middle East. Um, and the reason for that was this, um, uh, topic of blue ocean, which I know we've talked about before, uh, in relate in your blog post as well. Um, so maybe you could go into a little bit more detail about um, Amazon Seller Society, what you're aiming to do, and and the clients and and businesses you're supporting. Yeah, uh, we uh, uh, in, in initially our main the core of our business is uh, supporting sellers on mm -hmm. this platform called Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, um, obviously, when you're when you're setting up a business, either Amazon or physical business, there are so many pieces to create like a wonderful puzzle. Um, mm. And sometimes as an entrepreneur, you might have a certain skill set, but lack knowledge in, in other types of skills that you also require mm. to, to have a perfect business running. And that's where we come in. So we're able to support sellers of all levels, really, but we're very much focused on small to micro sized businesses, because that's where we find where we can make the most difference. Um, what would you need from somebody like us? Well, something as simple as training so that you learn how Amazon operates and it can go all the way up to uh, the operational services that you might need. So we work with a lot of local sellers, but we also work with a lot of um, uh, international sellers based in Europe as well as the US who know that the Middle East is a really cool, very expanding market e-commerce wise and very stable economically at the moment and are looking to expand their product line. It's very easy for you to expand when you have a marketplace that has set up all of the logistics. You just basically need to plug your product into the Amazon catalog and start selling it to customers. But obviously you need to set it up and position it in a way that it sells, you need to market it. And we offer all of those services. We, we, we are a 360 degree agency. Um, and you know, to top all of that off, uh, this year uh, there is, for service providers like us, there's also a certification that is given to you by Amazon, which is not an easy certification to get because obviously if Amazon says, yes, this is a good company to work with, then they need to be sure that we are a good company. So it took us some time to become verified for them to you know, go through all of, our, uh, all of our accounts to see what we do and all of our processes and systems. And we became a certified service provider. So not only do we offer these operational services, but we also are uh, partnered with Amazon so we can directly communicate with Amazon and the Amazon team and support anybody. So we really do everything. We, we still do the trainings. We do a lot of events. 
we're focused a lot on entrepreneurs and supporting them all the way to brands and businesses that actually need not only consultation and information, but they need physically somebody to do the, the services that you acquire as an Amazon seller. Okay, so you're, yeah, as you said, you're a 360 degree full service service provider for Amazon sellers. And I wondered, do you ever um, suggest anything to do with e-residency to sellers on Amazon? Is, is e-residency an option for people, especially in the Middle East, who, may, who might want to sell their products into Europe, for example? I have and I do <laughs> because I, you know, I wanted to pay it forward. So we have a very... Um, we have a very active YouTube channel, very much focused on Amazon, of course. Yes. But uh, one of the things that I wanted to do was, you know, just because I saw an e-residency um, video on YouTube and that was the thing that led me to become an e-resident, I wanted to do the same for other people. So I was able to uh, interview Melissa in your uh, in your offices oh, and we were yes. able to do that video just to talk about the e-residency. So um, I think e-residency definitely is, is a great option for anyone that's looking to sell on Amazon. Technically speaking, anybody can become an Amazon seller. Amazon doesn't discriminate, but in a sense, they still do. Obviously, Amazon don't allow anybody from any country due to not obviously not political reasons, but due to their operational reasons. You can't just be anyone and open uh, an Amazon seller account. You need to be either a resident of a certain country or you need to have a business in a certain country. So that limits a lot of options for a lot of people residing in lots of countries. Mm -hmm. And it's not only just for third world countries. It's just for a lot of countries. It's just how the business operates. So the Estonia is a country that is allowed on all of Amazon's marketplaces. And that's why becoming an e-resident and opening your Estonian company will allow you to sell, no matter who you are, will allow you to sell on Amazon's, all of Amazon's 20 different marketplaces globally. So that would be the first reason. The second reason is I, com I am an Estonian company. That's what I operate. I actually opened another Estonian company as well. So even though our offices are in the UAE, we operate as an Estonian company. And for us, we, we will continue because we've seen Estonia, you know, I, I can't talk enough about it, but, you know, one of the reasons why is because it, it has the most tax-friendly environment when it comes to, you know, if we look at all of the European countries. And I think that is also very important when you are a small business, because these things do make a very big difference. Yeah, being able to reinvest your profits and um, and increase the capital of your company is 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 really fantastic for all companies, but especially for startups and small business, I think, definitely. Um, so I, you keep saying that you're a big fan of your residency, and I think recently is a test of, Recently, we um, we we signed an agreement with you to become an e-residency envoy to make your passion for e-residency official. So, um, are you excited about this? Uh, it's it's part of a program that e-residency has just launched called the Spokespersons Project. And um, I wondered if you might introduce it because we haven't really talked about it uh, on these conversations yet. So, please uh, let us know. Let it let it let the audience know what this project program is about and what how you're excited about it. Yeah, I am very excited. Uh, I think, Hannah, you would be, anybody would be excited about um, any service or program or anything if you found that it was valuable and a very important part of your success and your growth. Um, definitely, I'm sure a lot of people have thought about the e-residency program. I'm not saying if you become an e-resident, automatically you're going to be a successful entrepreneur. But it does give you the tools and resources at your disposal so that you have no more excuses. You don't have an excuse. And um, I had a, an incredible uh, end of uh, 2022 because I was able to be one of the attendees of the e-residency uh, uh, annual eight-year celebration. Uh, in, in Tallinn. And uh, what, what I said is, I just had like a small speech. And what I said was, you know, most e-residents are people who um, are very hardworking, but they just happen to have maybe the wrong nationality. Maybe mm -hmm. the country where they come from or where they reside in doesn't 
provide them the tools as a business owner that they need in order to do whatever they want. And that's what the e-residency program does. It just treats you as if you are a resident of Estonia, even though you're not, and you're able to operate from anywhere. You could be at home chilling on the couch, but you still have the same opportunity as everyone else. And that to me is, is very, very valuable. Um, I'm sure it's probably not valuable if you are somebody that is used to these things, if you are maybe a, a French national or something like that. But if you come from a, a different part of the world, if you come from different countries, you don't have all of those opportunities. So one opportunity that also was presented to me was, was something that I know you guys have been working on for a while, but it's to become an e-residency envoy. And it was like a no-brainer for me. I always talk about the e-residency. I talk about Estonia. I not only am an e-resident, I'm actually a resident now of Estonia as well. So um, so it was uh, honestly an honor and a privilege. The whole concept of being an envoy is just to be able to maybe officially, I would like to say officially, talk about yes, the e-residency program, introduce mm -hmm. people uh, to it, explain a little bit more about it. Um, and I'm very happy to do it. And I think I have a little bit more opportunity because I do speak a lot in a lot of different settings, definitely about e-commerce and about what I do as a business. But the e-residency program is very much uh, aligned with, with, uh, with what I do. So now I'll be able to not only, uh, so I'll be like officially be able to talk about the e-residency. And I'm very, very excited about it. I'm very excited to see what we're going to be able to do this year. Yeah, I think our team is extremely excited. It's a win-win, I think, for both. I think for, for the program, the best people to talk about your residency are you, the e-residents who have actually, you know, gone through all the, the technical side of things, the picking up, the running your business from, from wherever you are in the world. Also, um, as you as you said, you become a resident and you do spend a lot of time in Tallinn, so you know the Estonian business culture pretty well by now as well. So I think it's really exciting for us to have you guys, uh, you and I think there's about 13 or 14 already uh, envoys to, to help us talk about the program. But hopefully, you know, you're, you can also get something out of it in terms of um, media support, um, event uh, participation, these kinds of things. So um, it's really exciting. And I'm. it's so nice to welcome you into uh, a, new, a new part of the community, the envoy community as well. Yeah. So as an envoy and as an e-resident and as a resident uh, who knows Estonia pretty well, do you have any advice for people thinking about becoming an e-resident or starting a company in Estonia? Um, I honestly, like a lot of things that I do, I just found uh, I learned a little bit about it. I didn't know everything. And I just said, let me go for it. So I think that's sometimes the best thing uh, ever, because sometimes you might fall into what we know as analysis paralysis, all overthinking <laughs> things. Like um, the sign behind you, the perfect is boring message. You know, sometimes you've got to sort of have, you have to go with the 80 20 rule, right? So, <laughs> yeah. um, I'm not suggesting that you don't think about uh, uh, opening your own business, but um, I, I was able to develop a full business because of the e residency, but that's not necessarily what somebody wants to do. The cool thing about becoming an e-resident is um, very similar, I like to say, as operating your own business on Amazon. You can tailor it to whatever size you want. You can, you can be a solopreneur and just um, operate as a freelancer if you want, or you can grow a really big business with employees. So the sky is the limit, really. To, to being uh, an e-resident and registering your business in Estonia. And, um, you know, one thing that you, what, what you talked about is the uh, culture, the business culture in Estonia, which is absolutely mind blowing. And yes, it is very, very motivating once you are around other uh, businesses, everybody's so focused, everybody's so motivated, everybody's looking to not just grow their business, but actually make a difference, which is, which is very refreshing. And I basically think to come back to the main question, um, if you're thinking of setting up your own business and you're looking for a way, I think you should look at the e-residency as a really interesting uh, program that supports 
entrepreneurs, freelancers, and small businesses, which is exactly what I think uh, anybody looking to register and become an e-resident is. And it is really valuable because um, not only will you be given a business, but you'll also be given support uh, from other e-residents, uh, tools through the marketplace that you guys have created, which you know you can find every single service provider that understands exactly what you're talking about, what the e-residency program is, and they they can support you. So it's really, really a no-brainer for me, but it is a very good option for anyone that's looking to set up their business for sure. Thank you. Thank you for all the messaging <laughs> that, <laughs> that you've, uh, you've you've said. Thank you. Um, so what's next for 2023? Um, do you have big plans for your business? I know, I think you're coming to Thailand in May, I think. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in person then. But um, yeah, what else is what else is, are you excited about this year for your business? We're very excited because we're, you know, we've been we've been growing at like a 200 percent rate year on year. So we're very, very happy with that. But we're still operating as a small business. And that's what I want to do, because I don't want to become like a, a large, large business where, you know, it's it's very tough to be able to support one on one sellers. And, and so we want to go global, but still remain local, if you know what I mean. Um, we also uh, became, you know, we we launched our second startup because Amazon Sellers Society is a startup, but we also launched our second startup, which is uh, definitely very much, um, let's say, inspired by Estonia because it's a software. Yeah. Very good. Yes. <laughs> so, so we found a, a, a huge gap in the market related to um, operating softwares for people who sell online and in particular, obviously, on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And we decided to develop a software that also supports uh, small businesses be able to know things like their profitability, how much money they're spending on ads and an easy to understand dashboard. So we launched our MVP last year and we're very much focused this year to develop it as, you know, alongside of our second business as, uh, as much as possible. It is also an Estonian startup. So we're very happy with that as well. And, you know, like all Estonian startups, we aim to become a unicorn somewhere sometime. That's, that's everybody's uh, objective. Nobody wants anything other than to be a unicorn. So we're working on that. That is our main focus for this year, for sure. Sounds like it's going to be a great year for you. Very exciting. So um, before we end, uh, I've got five rapid fire questions. Sure. What normally happens, though, with these rapid fire questions is they don't tend to be so rapid fire. So don't worry. <laughs> be in a few words or in, in, a, in a sentence or in a paragraph. It's no problem. Um, but the first one is, do you prefer using your e-residency digital ID or a smart or the smart ID app? Smart ID app. Yes. And yesterday um, we found out that the um, the e-business register now accepts Smart ID for submitting annual reports. So really? Oh. Yes. So you can use it I for just love it. Almost now. I just love yeah. it. I just love the Smart ID because yeah. it's just like dee, 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 on your phone. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. You, feel, you feel like it's really easy, but also you feel like you, you, it's secure because, you know, you know, there's there's multiple things going on and no one can really steal anything it's all very secure yeah yes yes, yes. so uh, you said you come from a family of entrepreneurs um so you probably have some uh, heroes from family or, or maybe outside but who is your entrepreneurial or professional hero and they can be living or dead uh, my uh, pr uh, my definite hero is somebody really close to me and it's my father he okay. is living and yeah. he's definitely my entrepreneurial hero for sure. Fantastic. Keeping it in the family. I like it. <laughs> yeah, keeping it in the family. Yeah. Um, just a couple of re recommendations um, maybe that you have for people who are interested. Uh, maybe maybe your own YouTube channel as well um, or a podcast or any blogs um, that you could recommend to the audience. Uh, well, yes, thank you so much. Let me plug my own uh, YouTube of course. channel. <laughs> so uh, we work really hard on the YouTube content because we find that education is very, very an integral mm -hmm. part of uh, becoming a successful business owner. And uh, definitely, you know, the cool thing about Amazon is that anybody can become an Amazon seller. You know, can be a nine to five and then set up your own business. But 
it also takes a lot of skills at the same time. So yes, our 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 YouTube channel is very very you know we we work really hard and we put out a lot of content. So if you're interested with anything related to Amazon, then go check it out. It's called Amazon Seller Society, and I do all of the videos. But uh, I do listen. And I think this is a very popular podcast in the UK and definitely now globally. I do listen to Diary of a CEO, which is oh, one I of love, my favorite yeah, podcasts. I love it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's really cool because it's very, very interesting to hear, um, you know, people being human. Yes. And then sometimes you, you, you find that, okay, if this happened to me or if this happened to that person, it's so normal for me to be going through what I'm going through. And yeah. I actually do read a lot of these types of biographies uh, from, from really like business people. I like, like to read their, their biographies. So this would be like a natural thing for me. So that is a recommended podcast for sure. I really like that podcast. I, I, in the last few weeks, I've listened to a, a couple of episodes and there was one episode where I really disagreed with the person. And then there was another episode where I really agreed with the person, but the host, I think his name is Stephen, is just so good at navigating different points of view and different family upbringings and everything. Yeah, it's, it's super interesting and, and it's, it's amazing to hear different types of businesses and, and, yeah. and CEOs of businesses. Yeah. yeah. Okay, the next question is, what is your preferred location and work setup? Because you do travel a lot. You're sometimes in Thailand. You're sometimes in Dubai. I'm sure you're traveling into other countries as well. I think you mentioned Turkey. But where? what's your preferred work setup and location? Uh, Thailand in summer. Yes, very good answer. <laughs> I love Thailand in summer. I fell in love with Thailand when I, when I, when I, came, when I first came. And uh, it's just so magical. It's such a magical city. And anybody that is in town, and I tell them it's such a magical city, like the vibes, the energy, they're like, really? Yes, really. It's such a magical city. I absolutely love it. And I really do value, like I love to work. My work is my passion. So the beauty about summer is, first of all, the weather is great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And second of all, the day is so long. You know, yes. The day is so long. You've got so much yes. sunlight. So you feel like you you can do so many more activities. So I love yeah. uh, Thailand in, in summer for sure. And that would be my one of my preferred locations. But I also really love Dubai, but in winter. So the other way around. So I love Dubai in winter. And that's what I've been trying to do. This year, I haven't really done it yet. But last year, I was able to do it. So that's what I'm trying to do. Just split up my time between Dubai and, and uh, Thailand. And this is the beauty of e-residency and being location independent. So you can you can 100%. do that. It's absolutely incredible for sure. My final my final uh, rapid fire is describing your connection to Estonia. So you've just talked a little bit about Thailand, but maybe you can talk a little bit more broadly about Estonia, the country. Um. Well. Uh... To be quite honest, I really didn't know anything about Estonia before. Um before learning about the e-residency. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that because it took me six months to get my e-residency card, mm -hmm. so during those six months and everything was on lockdown and stuff, all I did was consume content about Estonia. I just wanted to know about Estonia, about Tallinn, and I watched mm -hmm. so, many, so many documentaries, so many YouTube videos and, and stuff of that sort. So I was like really intrigued. And when I had the opportunity to travel to Estonia, um, um, and that happened like in at the end of 2021. So it, it took mm -hmm. a really long time for me to go. It just wasn't like instant. Um, I was very, very excited. Um, what I really love about Estonia is um, the startup community. You know, yeah. being an entrepreneur myself and being in love with business, it's just so, so, so motivating and exciting to be around, you know, uh, people who are looking to, uh, not necessarily like not everybody is creating their own business, but everybody is on a mission to mm -hmm. be part of a business or be part of something that has meaning behind it. Yeah. And that's really, really, really exciting and motivating for me. So I think that, you know, other than Tallinn and Estonia in general being a beautiful country, beautiful people, but also that type of energy um, is very motivating for somebody like me. So that is, you know, part of it. I think my first ever 
um, you know, event in Estonia. So I came to Estonia. I decided I want to spend a little bit of time. I knew absolutely nobody, of course. And then uh, the startup, the Est startup Estonia had um, like the very next week, maybe after I, I first came, they had like an event where we went for international founders. And it was absolutely crazy because there were so many people from so many different countries and, um, you know, very easy access to each other. So easy, so warm. And it was very, very motivating. That was my my first introduction to Estonia. And it's been like this ever since. So um, I, for me personally, would say the country itself, but definitely the people living in the country and the business environment and community. And I think that's the secret why there's so many incredible startups. It's this this community that I think has developed just because people are here, not 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 for any like I don't think anybody set out to create this community. I know you guys work really hard on it, but I think it's just it's attracting the right people and that those people are just making the community grow. Yeah, I think I always say that Estonians have uh, entrepreneurship in their DNA. And so it's it's unsurprising that the country attracts through e-residency, through startup, per, the startup visa program. Um, and of course, the, the events like Latitude and Startup Day, it's no surprise that those, these kinds of things do attract some of the most interesting, innovative entrepreneurs in the world like you to come to the country and, and build your business here. So, yeah. Well, on that note, I think that's a really nice note to, to end on. Um, I can add a link to your YouTube channel and to your website um, into the description, but is there any other way, uh, anything you're looking for the audience or any way that they can contact you if they're interested in finding out more about Amazon sellers or, or your new startup as well? Uh, you can just uh, anywhere and everywhere, Amazon Sellers Society, just type it in Google and you'll find us. So we're, we're, we try to be as... Uh, you know, we try to create as much uh, content as possible, because yes. again, this is how we're able to find our own tribe. But uh, if you're interested and you want just information, you can just find us. Thank you so much, Hannah, for for adding my uh, my links. But you know, if anybody needs anything, we're very very happy to support for sure. Great, and thank you so much for the for your time today. It's been a really great conversation. I, I'm really happy that I've taken the time as well to learn more about your businesses because I didn't, for example, I had no idea that you had the nutrition background at all, which is super interesting. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking more about your businesses and everything when you're here in May. So thank you so much, Christelle, for, for joining us today. Thanks so much, Anna, for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Great, thank you.